morning. Today is the umpteenth day since our classrooms have been closed. That means we haven't been able to share snacks at school, we haven't been able to play sports, and really, the hardest part has probably been being apart from each other. Yeah, doing my work from home is not really tough. Listening to radio programs and keeping up with teachers through WhatsApp is all right, but I also miss my friends. Well, we have great news to announce. With this special TV program dedicated to us kids, we can be in it together. Our friends can all tune in at the same time, learn about the zoo, drawing, and other cool things, and we can share our progress with each other. Social distancing may have us apart, but virtual learning is bringing us together. Let's jump on into what is ahead for us today. In it together! Are you like me and love music? I love calming music to study to, fun music to dance to, and even soft music to fall asleep to. I love music so much that I want to learn to make some. Thankfully, we have our music teacher coming on now to help us make sweet sounds. Enjoy! Good morning, students, and welcome to our music class today. I will be your teacher. My name is Miss Crawford, and I am joined with Maya. And today, together, we are going to make sweet songs, OK? So our first topic today, we are going to be focusing on rhythm and beat. We want to look at what those terms mean and how do they apply to music. So firstly, we're going to look at beat. Beat is the steady pulse of the music. Now, just like how you have a steady heartbeat, if you place your thumb, go ahead, Maya, place your thumb on your wrist, you should find a heartbeat. You can either find it here on your thumb or you can find it here on your neck and you would feel your heart pumping and it is at a steady pace. There is no change. In the same way, in music, you have a steady heartbeat. You have the steady beat of the music, all right? Um, let's say we sing the song, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. When you sing that song, you can find a steady beat that you can keep along with it, all right? The beat does not change. For example, if we do, Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, how I wonder what you are Up above the world so high Like a diamond in the sky Twinkle, twinkle, little star How I wonder what you are So what we were snapping was the beat and you notice that the beat did not change. So we're going to try to do that again, Maya. And what I would like you to do is to sing along with me and to keep a steady beat. You do not stop throughout the entire song. You think you could do that? Mm -hmm. All right, let's try. One, two, three, and three. very good you kept a steady pulse throughout the music now with music it's a good thing music is very good because you are able to use your hands you can use your feet you can use your lips whatever you want to, to be a part of the music so we are going to sing another song and it asks you to tap your feet so we're going to tap our feet to the beat of the song then we're going to nod our head and you nod your head and we're going to clap our hands, all right? So I'll sing the song first for you so you can, you can hear how it goes, and then we're going to do the actions, all right? Tap your feet, tap your feet, tap your feet along with me. Tap your feet, tap your feet like one, two, three. Can you try that with me? And Maya, can you sing along with me? And you're going to tap your feet. One, two, three, 
Some job. So we were able to use our feet. We tapped our feet, we nodded our heads, and we also clapped our hands and be able to keep a steady beat. And do you remember what is the definition of beat? It is the steady pulse of the music. Can you say that? The beat is the steady pulse of the music. Awesome job. Very good. So we use the different beats now to create rhythm. So today we're going to talk about rhythm and we are going to learn the different notes that we can use to create rhythm. Rhythm refers to the pattern of long and short sounds. So we're going to use the same beats that we spoke of before and we are going to talk about different notes that have different amounts of beats. All right. So there are long songs and short songs. We are going to learn about the first note that has a long sound and the name of that note is the whole note. The whole note gets four beats, so that means whatever instrument you play or if you are singing, whatever you do, you hold it out for four beats. So, for example, a singer would sing la, and that is for four beats. Can you try it with me, Maya? Let's sing together. I'll come to win after four, okay? One, two, and we sing. La. Very good. If I was playing a whole note on my piano, I would hold it out for four beats. So there I played the note for four beats. Let's look at another note. Here we have the half note. The half note, as the name suggests, it gets half of the whole. So the half note gets two beats. So that means, Maya, we're going to sing the half note for two. For example, la, la. Just now I sang two half notes, and they're much shorter than the whole note. Can you try that with me? Let us sing two half notes, all right? One, two, three, and. La, la. Again, let's try. One, two, three, and. La, la. Awesome. We have one more note, which is the quarter note. The quarter note gets one beat, so it's very short. For example, if we sing it, it would go la, very short. Can you try that with me? One, to one quarter note. La. Very good. Now can you give me four quarter notes? One, two, three, and. La, 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 la. Again, let's try. One, two, three, and. La, 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 la. Very good. So we learned that the whole note gets four beats, the half note gets two, and the quarter note gets one. What we want to do today, we want to use some animal songs. I know that you know some animal songs, so today we're going to hiss like a snake for the whole note that gets four beats. So let's try that. Let us hiss like a snake for four beats after the count of four. One, two, three, four. Hiss. Again, two, three, four. Awesome job. Now, the half note, we're going to change the sound. We're going to moo like a cow. So we're going to do two half notes, two moves. Moo, moo. Can you do that with me? One, two, three, and moo, moo. Again, two, three, four. Moo, moo. Awesome. We have one more note that we're going to do, and that is a quarter note. Do you remember how many beats the quarter note gets? One beat. One beat, very good. 
So let's say we quack like a duck. We're going to quack like a duck for the quarter note and we're going to do four quarter notes. That means we're going to do four quacks. Let's try. One, two, three, and quack, quack, quack. Again, two, three, and quack, 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 quack. Awesome job. So what we want to do is to put all of those together. And I want us to use, we're going to use our note pyramid. Here we have all the notes that we have learned. This is the whole note oh, no. that gets four, four beats. beats. This is the Half the half note that gets how many beats? Two beats. Two beats, and these are? The quarter notes. Quarter notes that get? One beat. One beat. So we're going to start at the top of the pyramid, and we're going to go down, and we're going to use the animal songs. So as I point to them, I want you to make the sound, OK? Let's try. After the count of four, one, two, three, and. Moo, moo, quack, quack, quack. Quack. Again, two, three, and two, three, and moo, moo, quack, 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 quack. Awesome job. All right, so now that we had learned the different notes, we're going to put them into patterns. We're going to work on four patterns today. I'm going to show you a pattern, and I want to see if you can say the pattern using the different songs that we did. You remember we used the hiss for the whole note, the moo for the half note, and the quack for the quarter note. Very good. So how would we say this after the count of four using the animal sounds, okay? One, two, three, and. Quack, 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 quack. Very good. Again, one, two, three, four. Quack, 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 quack. Very good. So what now if we look at this poster? Do you think you can say it? Yes? Let's try. One, two, three, four. Quack, quack, moo. Again, two, three, and? Quack, quack, moo. Very good. Our third one is this one. Let's try, all right? The half note and two quarter notes. One, two, three, and? Moo, quack, quack. Again, two, three, and. Moo, quack, quack. Awesome job. We have one more. So this one includes the half note. And do you remember the name of this note? That's a whole note. That's a whole note that gets how many beats? Four beats. Four beats and one more half note. All right, let's do this one. One, two, three, and. Moo. Again, let's do this one. All right, the half note, the whole note, and the half note again. Let's try after the count of four, okay? One, two, three, and. Moo. Moo. Again, two, three, four. Moo. Moo. Awesome job, Maya. You did a great job today. So we are able to keep a beat. While we are singing a song, remember that the beat is steady, and we are able to say different rhythms using what three types of notes? The whole note. The whole note. The half note. Half. And the quarter note. And the quarter note. Thank you for joining us today at Sweet Songs. I hope that you learned something and that you had fun. Remember to keep singing and keep making music. Goodbye. Who knew that making sweet sounds could be as enjoyable as hearing them? That was a pretty cool session, and I'm looking forward to even more. Maybe I can even become the next Leela Vernon. How about you? Which Belizean legends do you like? Let us know in the comments while we go for this next short break. Welcome back to In It Together. I'm Tristan. You might not be able to guess it, but I love dancing. Dancing is one of my ways to have fun and to express myself. When we get into some cultural dances, dancing is even educational. So I hope you're ready to let loose because the time is now dance o'clock. Miss Cassell will be your guide. Enjoy. Hey 
everyone, welcome to Dance Oak Club, where the dancing never stops. My name is Miss Chriselle Gabriel, but you can call me Miss Chris or Miss Chriselle, and I'll be your instructor for the next few weeks. So guess what? We'll be doing all types of dances and a different one each week. So get up, get ready, and let's dance the time away. So before we get into it, what do we have to do before every dance class? Stretch. We need to stretch, definitely. So guess what? Let's put on our dancing shoes and start our warm up so that we don't hurt ourselves when we start dancing, all right? So let's cue music. And first position, we're gonna start with the breathing. So you're gonna breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Here we go, use your arm. Three, four, and breathe out. Three, again, breathe in, and one, two, three, four, and out. Let's speed it up a bit for two counts. One, two, out, two, in, two, out. Faster singles, in and out, in and out. In and out, in and out. Now we're gonna add a releve, and a releve means to rise. So we're gonna go up on our tippy toes when we're doing our breathing again. So in for four. In, two, three, four, and out. Two, three, again, and in. Two, three, four, and out. Two, three, now for twos, and in. Two, out, two. In, two, out, singles, and in, and out. In, and out, in, and out, in, and out. Now look left and right, here we go. Look left, right, left, right, left, right, left, down and up. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, side to side, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven circles, and one, two, three, four, five, six. Reverse. One, two, three, four, five, six. Shoulders up and down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Faster. One, two, three, four, five. Now who can go the fastest? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good job, check it out. Now we're gonna roll it back. Pull it up and roll it back. Pull it up, roll it back. Three and four. Now forward. One, two, three. Four. Great job. Hands out to the side. Make sure it's straight across. And give me a press. Now, don't turn it into the bird arms. No, keep it straight. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. Touch your shoulders now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Take it in and up. In, up, in, out. In, up, in, we're going slow. In, up, in, out, in, up. Now we're gonna speed it up. And in, up, in, out, in, up, in, out, in, up, in, out, in, up, in, out. Good job. Shake out those arms again. We're gonna work out the legs now. Quick bounce, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Stay low, and bounce, and one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Stretch it out. Point your toes. Other side. Point your toes. Again. Point. Other side. And point. Now center. Stretch your legs, stretch it up. Roll up slowly. Two, three, four. Close your legs. And one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, a little faster, and one, two, three, four, five, six, together, one, two, three, four, hold it, five, six, seven, eight, good job. Now quick floor stretch before we get into our dance move. So take the leg to the side, take it behind, good job. Now butterfly, check it out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, head over, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, for fours, one, two, three, four, down, two, three, twos, one, two, down, singles, row, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now you're gonna try and push your knees down. Some of you are doing this so easily. Teacher needs a little help. So we're gonna hold it. One, two, three, four. Woo, shake it out. Let me hear you make some noise. And thunder, and stop. Thunder, and stop. Point your toes, point, flex. Point, flex, point. Flex, point, take a deep breath in, reach for the sky. Reach for your toes. And up, two, three, one more time, reach for the sky. Up, two, three, four, pose. Two, three, four. All right, now we're gonna stand up, like dancers. Don't touch the ground, don't touch the ground, and we're gonna push up. Good job, give yourselves a hand. That was a great warm up. That was a great warm up. I'm sure you're sweating just like I, are you sweating, Aaron? Was that so, that was so easy? Do you think that was easy too? Are you sure you're not sweating? Oh man, it's because teacher is getting old, isn't it? Oh my, that was such a great warm up. I'm excited, are you excited to learn? Yes. yes, so guess what? We're gonna learn our first dance move in Creole. We're gonna do a movement called Shine the Shilling. Shine the Shilling, yes. Now, you're gonna take your right leg first, put it in front on your heel, and you're gonna turn it from the left to the right. Let's try that again. So step out and turn, bring it back in. Step out, turn it, bring it back in. Now when you bring it back in, you're gonna stomp. One, two, out, turn. One, two, out, turn. Can you do that? One, good, take it slow. Good. Do you know why we do that move? Because when your mom and, you and your daddy and your grandma and your grandpa were older and they were out and they found a quarter in the ground and it looked a little bit rusty, they put their heel on it and they did this to shine it up, just like that. So we call it shine the shilling. So let's pretend like we just found some quarters on the ground and we're gonna shine them up. Put your hands on your hips to get ready. Take the leg out. Turn it in and bring it back. And one and two. And now we're gonna go a little faster. One, two, stomp and stomp. One, two, stomp and stomp. Good job. Now that was our right leg. Let's try it on our left. Heel and turn, stomp, stomp. Heel, turn, stomp, faster. Heel, turn, stomp, stomp. Heel, turn, stomp, stomp. Heel, turn, stomp, stomp. Heel, turn, stomp. Good job. Now, when we do this movement, we don't want to just stay up here. We want to go a little lower. Well, what do you want? Go lower. Good job. So let's take our right leg two times, left leg two times, and make sure we go low. One, two, three. Here we go. One, two. One, two. Good job. Left leg. One, two. One, two. All right. That was move number 
One. <laughs> now we're gonna do movement number two. Good. Our second movement is gonna be, what is that? Turn. Good, we're just gonna be turning. So we're gonna put one leg like this, and the other one stays on the ground, and we're gonna hop like this. Hop, 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 hop. While we're turning, turn and turn and turn and turn and turn. Turn faster, turn faster. Oh my goodness, are you getting dizzy? Oh no, we're getting dizzy. Guess what? To not get dizzy, I want you to look at something right in front of you. Look at your television. Look at your computer or your phone. And what you're gonna do is always look in front. And every time when you turn, you try to make sure it's the last thing you see and the first thing you see before the rest of your body comes around. So it's the last thing you see and the first thing. So make sure you always look for the front. So I'm gonna look, 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 look. Look at it, then turn around. Look, 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 look and then turn around. So make sure you remember where to spot. Ready? Look, look, and go, and look, and look, and look, and look. Are you still dizzy? <laughs> it takes some practice, don't worry about it. So that was move number two. So let's get into movement number Great, so movement number three, it involves your shoulders. Open up your hands. Your shoulders need to go like this. Let me see you shake it. Shake it just like in the warm-ups. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it. So you're gonna lean on a leg now. We're gonna go that way. So lean, leave the other leg out straight, and you're gonna pretend that you're kicking something with this leg, kick something. Kick something, kick it, kick it, kick it. Now you're gonna try and leave your hands all the way out here and move your shoulders while they're kicking. So we're gonna go, and one and two and three and four, five, six, other side, slow motion, and kick and kick. Move your shoulders, shoulders. So let's go, and one and two and three and four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, that's called a, what is it called? Do you remember? You don't remember? It's a shuffle. What is it? Shuffle. All right, so we just did a shuffle or a brush. That's what you call it too. You can call it a brush. So we just did movement number three. three. So now we're gonna get into the last movement for today and it's movement number four. Four, awesome. It's called a sedonga. What is it called? Whoa! So, guess what you're gonna do? Put your legs in second position. Now, you normally have a skirt on, so we're gonna show you how it looks with the skirt afterwards. You put your hands on the ends of your skirts, and if you don't have a skirt, if you're a boy, you just have to go down like that, okay? So, with the sudunga, what you're gonna do is you're gonna move from side to side, side to side, and try and take your back down into a flat back like this. So side to side, swing your skirt, go down, 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 and up, 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 and down, 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 and up, 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 up. Good job, so what did we just do? I said dunga. So the first one was shine the shilling, shine the shilling. Movement number two, turn. Movement number three, shuffle. Other side, shuffle. Number four, sedunga. <laughs> yes, so we just got through the four movements and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna put those four movements into a short dance routine. So we're back and guess what? Now I'm gonna show you how to do it in a Creole skirt. So, hands on your hips while you're waiting for the music. And then we're gonna go straight into the shine shilin. Two times. And then next leg two times. The turn, the shuffle, and then the sedunga to finish it all up. And do you know what else is important? The smile. Make 
make sure you're smiling when you're dancing. Here we go. Say it. Cue music. Cue music. And you say? goodness I'm so tired do you think you can continue dancing Aaron whoa I'm sure you all did a great job round of applause again let's go let's go let's go awesome that was really fun right Belize is a diverse country with many different cultures so when it comes to dancing we have everything from punta to salsa and everything in between that session just now was pretty fun so we will take a little commercial break and if it worked up your appetite, that's good. Because up next, we will move into children's cooking show. Do me a favor. Please raise one or even two hands if you love your belly. Since school has been closed, I've averaged about 20 trips to the fridge every day. So I am looking forward to what's coming up next, Chef Beard Kids. This cooking show will teach us how to feed ourselves with minimal adult supervision. Let's get cooking. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Chef Beard and this is... Where's Mini Beard? I just got a message from Mini Bear. Let's see what he has to say. Hey guys, it's me, Mini Bear. I'm sorry I can't be with you this week, but don't worry, I'll be with you next week. Well, that's unfortunate. I guess Mini Bear is on the road doing some other business, but that's okay, my little chefs because I have a very special recipe for you today. Are you ready? Popcorn chicken! Popcorn chicken, 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 popcorn chicken. That's right, <laughs> popcorn chicken. So get all your ingredients ready because today we're going to have a lot of fun. Alright guys, let's get cooking. For our version of popcorn chicken, you need 9 very simple ingredients. 3 cups of flour, 2 teaspoons garlic powder, 1 teaspoon salt, half a teaspoon of black pepper, 2 eggs, 1 lime, 1 cup of oil, vinegar and of course your chicken. We like to get our chicken breast from the supermarket that is prepared as chicken steaks because um, let me sh let me pull it up for you. You see it's already cut into thin little strips which makes the work a lot easier. Otherwise just get some normal breast and uh, you can cut it up into small little pieces. Let's jump right into it because I am surely excited for this recipe today. I hope you are too. The first thing we want to do is take our bowl with the three cups of flour and mix it with the garlic powder and the black pepper. Just give that a nice little mix. And remember guys, make sure you're always smiling when you're cooking. Because like my grandmother used to tell me, if you're cooking and you're not in a good mood, your food won't taste good. Ever since that day, whenever I cook, I always have a smile on my face. Side like this 
and gently hit it two to three times until you see a little crack right on, right on the top. Then you want to take your fingers using your thumbs and gently open it. Try your very best not to get little pieces of shell inside the bowl. But don't worry, if you ever get a little piece of shell or two inside the bowl, the easiest way to get that out is to use the same half of the shell. And for some strange reason, this works a lot better than a spoon or your finger. You're gonna reach that expert level where you can just crack the egg on the side of the surface like this. I used one hand to get it in there. It took me some good years before I was able to do that. So don't worry. Guys, now what you want to do is squeeze half a lemon into this, into this little bowl with the two eggs. Be very careful when you are handling knife. Take your time, no one is rushing you, and cut your lemon in half. Give it a gentle little squeeze. Now let's give this a little mix with the same form. Gently beat it. I'd say beat it for around 30 seconds. All right, that's looking good. Next step, this step is very important. If you hear anything from the Legion cooking, you hear your parents say, always make sure you wash your chicken properly before cooking. And this does not mean wash it with soap. This means you're going to cure it and make it edible by washing it with some white vinegar. Here we have some regular white vinegar and what I want to do is to get my little pieces of chicken breasts and put them in a bowl. We're going to use about a quarter cup of vinegar. Just enough to, it, it all depends on the amount of chicken that you're doing. Obviously if you're making a lot of chicken you're going to be using a whole lot more of vinegar. Don't be afraid to get your hands in there. After a minute of having this soap in the white vinegar, we're gonna rinse this up. And now it's time to cut these little pieces of chicken breast into the size of our popcorn chicken. So guys, this is what we're looking for. Some little cuts that are about an inch wide. So here we have little squares and just cut up all your chicken and let's have it ready for a fry. All right, and we are all done with our pieces of chicken breast. Now it's on to an even more exciting part of the cooking. You want to set up a nice little workstation and don't forget the process. What I like to do is to prepare all my little bits of pieces of chicken first, set them aside, then heat up my oil and get them fried. Now listen very carefully the way we are going to prepare this. Here we have our dry mix, which is the flour and our seasoning. Over this side, we have the wet mix, which is of course the eggs and the lemon. One at a time, you're gonna take a, a little piece of the chicken breast and using one of your hands for the dry mix and one of your hands for the wet mix, I'm gonna take this and gently coat it inside the flour. Then I'm gonna drop it in our wet mix. Now you want to use your other hand. And give it a little toss inside our wet mix and then drop it back in our dry mix and switch hands once again and give it another good coat of our dry mix and remember have fun while you are doing this
and there we have it. It wasn't so difficult, was it? Now guys, it's time to fry these bad boys up. What we're gonna need is a frying pan. Here I have a cup of oil, but the amount of oil that you use all depends on the size of your frying pan. What we are looking for is at least about a half inch of oil. Let's get this on the stove. What is very important is to know that we will not be frying this on high heat. We want to keep our heat at medium. The reason why we're doing that is so that the outside of our chicken doesn't burn and the inside is raw. Our oil is sounding very hot. A simple way to test if it's hot enough to fry, I usually use a wooden spoon. Gently put it in the oil and if you and if you see bubbles like that, that means it is hot enough and ready to fry. If you are not comfortable doing it with your hands, you can use a spoon as well. Oh man, look at those. We can already see they're turning a nice golden color and they look really crispy too. This will take around eight minutes guys. So just be patient, keep it moving around. Okay guys, we are all done. I made these in two batches. They took around eight minutes each. Really wasn't that difficult. You can dry these off on paper towels. I prefer to use a cook. I prefer to use a cooling rack. Now before we want to pop these in our mouth, we want to sprinkle a little bit of salt. Make sure that all of them are getting a little bit of salt. Now this is ready to eat. But, but if you like it spicy like my boys, you can also sprinkle a little bit of cayenne pepper. This looks really good. I can't wait to taste them. But before we get these popping, let's give Minibir a little call and see what he thinks. Hey Minibir, we're all done. Your favorite popcorn chicken. What do you think? Did we do a good job? Wow, that recipe looks great. I can't wait to be cooking with you next week. Well, you are from the Minish Chef himself. Now it's time to get these bad boys popping. Mmm. Popcorn chicken, 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 popcorn chicken. Well, guys, I hope you have a lot of fun making this recipe. Make it for your mom, your dad, your brothers and sisters, your friends. Surprise them. This was Chef Bear Kids. See you next week. Delicious. If I had a job, I would probably try to hire Chef Beard or Mini Beard to be my personal guides in the kitchen. But even based on what we just saw, I will now be able to cook more than just boiled eggs or cornflakes. I think I'm a pro in the making. Today has been very fun, right? I think so. We will go for our final commercial break now, and then we will move into our final segment for the day. Stay tuned. Welcome back to In It Together. Be honest. Raise your hand if all this coronavirus talk and lockdown has made you confused, stressed out, or even annoyed. Everyone has been affected some way or the other, even us kids. We need to make sure we address our feelings and thoughts. So now we move on into Peace Out, which will help us respond well to things that have been bothering us. Enjoy, guys, and peace out. Good morning, I am Ms. Brennan and I am your guide for today's edition of Peace Out. Today we will be discussing coping and coping strategies, so relax and get ready to have a fun session. So what is coping? 
Coping is the process of developing ways to get through difficult times. When we are having a difficult time, we should try to do something to solve the problem or improve the situation. This is called problem-focused coping. But when we are not able to do that, then we should try to change the way that we respond to the problem or situation. That is, change our thoughts or our feelings about the situation. This is called emotion-focused coping. In Belize and around the world, it is a very difficult time for a lot of people. Children are not in school, and some parents have lost their jobs or are working from home. There is not much that we can do right now to change or improve the situation. But one way that parents and children can change how they respond to the situation is by establishing a routine. If schools were open, parents and children would be following routines. There would be a routine before going to school that includes waking up, getting ready, leaving the house and getting to school. Then, when children arrive at school, there is a timetable that they use and follow. After school, children have to find their way home or get picked up by parents, and there are different chores and activities that must be done before they go to bed at night. So, if we establish a routine at home to guide our daily activities, and we incorporate some of the elements of the routines that would normally be in place, then that can make things a little easier. Do not try to remake the school timetable. You are not at school, you are at home, and you're dealing with numerous tasks at the same time. So when we're making a routine, it can be defined, meaning that we have specific times for specific activities, or it can be more fluid, where we have the order activities that can be completed for the day. So in the routine that we're gonna to make today, we're going to have time for work, we're going to have time for play, and we're going to have a time to check in or look at feelings. All right, so to develop a routine, we need paper and pencil or pen, something to write with, and we need items such as colored pencils, crayons, or markers so that you can decorate this routine. So let's move down to the floor where we can write and decorate this routine. As mentioned earlier, when completing a routine, we will have to include work, we will include play, and we will include a check-in. So let's start with a check-in. How are you feeling right now? How do you feel about not being in school? Is there anything that is confusing you or that you don't understand right now? What are you grateful for today? What would you like to accomplish today? Today, I would like for us to accomplish creating a routine. All right, so let's start with work. We have two work activities to put in our routine today. We have the teacher activities, that are those that your teacher sends in, and we have the Ministry of Education's talk show on the radio. So for your class, that occurs at 1.15. On our schedule, that will be a set time. That means we have to plan for before 1.15 and for after 2.10, which is when the radio show for your class finishes. So let's include the teacher activities. Since we have radio on the go in the afternoon, can we include the teacher activities in the morning? Okay, so let's do that. That means that before the teacher activities, we have to complete our morning routine, which includes getting out of bed, getting something to eat, taking a bath, and changing our clothes. So we can put that down as getting ready. So our work part of the routine is complete. Now we have to include the play part of the routine. What would we constitute play? When you're in school, you have break time in the mornings and for some people in the afternoons. So we're gonna have outside play. And for days when it's raining, we can include painting or drawing as playing. Something fun, something that you can do by yourself. And after check-in in the evening, then we can put down our bedtime routine, which would include supper, it would include cleaning up, ensuring that everything is back in its proper place, and it would include getting ready for bed. 
So during this time, if there is something that you wanted to get done for the day that you didn't get to do, then you can use it during this part of the day. Okay, so let's write our final schedule. First thing is getting ready, which includes breakfast and bath time. Then we have our check-in to figure out what we need to complete for the day, how you are feeling, how you slept last night. We have teacher activities that has the activities that your teacher has sent that we must complete and return to her. And then we have our playtime, which includes outside play, puzzles, painting. We go to lunch after that, and we have to finish with lunch at 1.15 so that we can listen in to our radio show. After the radio show, we have another session of play, and then we check in to see how the day went, what else is there for us to accomplish today. Then we have our shutting down time. That includes completing any goal that you didn't finish for the day, having supper, TV time, and getting ready for bed. So that brings us to the end of our coping activity for today. We have a completed daily schedule prepared now. Remember, being in a routine is a great way to counter some of the stresses we may be experiencing while at home. There are many other cool coping activities available, and I will be sure to cover more of those going forward so you can find that one that works best for you. Thanks for joining me today, and until next time, peace out. That was so relaxing and fun, right? I used to wonder why I would be feeling so tense or heavy, especially after watching the news or listening to my parents speak about what our country is going through right now. Talking about what we are feeling and knowing what we are feeling are important in making sure we remain happy. It even allows us to know what our parents are feeling, so we don't feel too sad when they seem worried or annoyed. We're really all in it together, and we all want to enjoy it. Peace out. So, that wraps up In It Together for today. Remember, this is a special show dedicated to us. Schools are closed, but we can still learn together, play together, dance together, draw together and have endless fun together. With our TVs or tablets or phones, we can link up in a productive way. And it's also a big change from just being at home idling for most of the day, which has gotten really boring. Remember, this show, Just For Us, will air every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 11 in the morning until midday. We air on Channel 7 all over the country and on Facebook at In It Together Belize. Please tell your friends and family members to join in on the fun. We are going through some pretty weird times, but don't worry. We'll get through this because we're in it together. Thanks for tuning in today.